Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. According to Fabrizio Romano, Manchester United want to continue with Solskjaer for as long as possible, with a view to access the situation in the summer. Now, not so long ago, it said Manchester United have made a final decision on the future of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. And Man United are now committed to stand by Solskjaer until the end of the season. Over the weekend, it said senior stars want Solskjaer sacked. That was stemming from Duncan Castles. Danny Mills recently said that Solskjaer commits a sackable offence in Man United training. And our senior players agreed that Solskjaer committed a sackable offence in training. Now Solskjaer, he's under pressure at Manchester United following back-to-back -back home defeats to Manchester City and Liverpool, and Man United have only won one of their last six Premier League games, and Man United are currently sitting sixths in the Premier League. So Solskjaer's job is safe for now, and yes, he will be in charge for the game against Watford this weekend. Last week, reports were coming out saying that Solskjaer is waiting to be sacked after leaving Manchester. Last Monday, Solskjaer flew back home to Norway with his family. Manchester United should have sacked Solskjaer after the 5-0 defeat to Liverpool. If we'd have sacked him after that game... I can assure Manchester United would have got Antonio Conte. And after the 5-0 defeat to Liverpool, it said Solskjaer had been given three games to save his job. We only won one of them three games. Beat Tottenham 3-0, drew 2-2 against Atalanta and lost 2-0 to Man City. If Manchester United do decide to sack Solskjaer, they'll have to pay him £7.5 million. Because in the summer, he signed a new three-year contract with Man United with an option of a further year. And Man United made a mistake giving him that contract. And a lot of United fans will agree with me on that aspect. But Solskjaer, he's losing the players. He's also losing the fans' support. Solskjaer's been given long enough at Manchester United. He's been Manchester United manager for almost three years. I'm surprised he's lasted as long as he has done, but the reason he remains Manchester United manager is because he's a legend of the club. Disregarding being a legend of the club, he would have been sacked a while ago. Now, on my recent video, I gave you the news on Zinedine Zidane. Now, reports have said today that talks have been ongoing between Manchester United and Zidane. But the deal is difficult because his preference right now is to coach the French team. Man United are hopeful that Zinedine Zidane's close relationships with Ronaldo and Varane could persuade him to join. Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo has said that he wants Zinedine Zidane at Manchester United in 2022. Obviously, Ronaldo knows Zinedine Zidane well because Ronaldo played under him when he was at Real Madrid. 
Reports have said, though, before that Zidane wasn't interested in the Manchester United job. But reports from Spain said a few weeks ago now that Zidane rejected the Newcastle job as he's waiting for the Man United or France job. Oh, I reckon Zidane would be the man for Manchester United. You know, I think Zidane would be capable of winning trophies at Manchester United. He'd suit the Shrappens of the club and he would get the best out of these group of players. So there you go. And Zidane is managerless because he left Real Madrid in the summer. You've got to admire what he did at Real Madrid. He won a lot of trophies at Real Madrid. So reflecting on that, he's got a good pedigree behind him. Zidane has not yet managed in the Premier League. It would be good for him to come and experience the Premier League, revert back to what I've mentioned on my recent videos. Uh, Brendan Rodgers, you know, he's been linked with a job at Man United. Uh, Brendan Rodgers is the favourite to replace Solskjaer. He said yesterday that Brendan Rodgers is more likely to become the new Man United manager than Zinedine Zidane. Brendan Rodgers was recently house hunting in Cheshire. Apparently, Brendan Rodgers has already verbally agreed to become Manchester United's new manager, but his preference would be to wait until next season because he's reluctant to leave Leicester midway through this season. And the Manchester Evening News said not so long ago that Man United are ready to trigger Brendan Rodgers' contract clause if Solskjaer gets sacked. Man United are confident that Brendan Rodgers will be their next manager. You know, should Brendan Rodgers replace Solskjaer? Would Brendan Rodgers get the best out of these group of players? Would he be capable of winning trophies if he came to Manchester United? Well, Brendan Rodgers is a far superior manager to Solskjaer. You've got to admire what Rodgers has done at Leicester. So far at Leicester, he's won the Community Shield in the FA Cup. He's been in charge of Leicester for almost three years and he's got a contract with them until 2025. Potticino to Manchester United is still a possibility because reports from France have said that Potticino is considering a return to the Premier League on his next job. Potticino has a full season left on his PSG contract. Ralph Ragnick has also been spoken about. Uh, Fabrizio Romano recently gave us an update on that and he said Manchester United turned down Ralph Ragnick. You know, there has been rumours of Ralph Ragnick possibly coming in as the interim manager until the end of the season. Uh, Eric Ten Hag, you know, he's been mentioned a lot as well. You've got to admire what Eric Ten Hag has done at Ajax. You know, he's won a few trophies with them and he's been Ajax manager for four years. But uh, revert back to Solskjaer, you know, if he does get sacked, he will be the fourth permanent manager to be sacked since Ferguson because Man United have already sacked three managers since Ferguson. We sacked David Moyes after 10 months, sacked Louis van Gaal after two years, was it? You know, we won the FA Cup under him and we sacked Jose Mourinho after two and a half years. Mourinho did enjoy one good season at Man United because he did win three trophies in his first season. But Solskjaer, I think that the expectations are far too high for him to exceed as Man United manager. 
Solskjaer is not capable of winning trophies as Man United manager. He's not yet won a trophy as Man United manager and we haven't won a trophy since 2017. And Solskjaer is in a position that he shouldn't be in. I hate to say this regarding Oli, but I'm just being realistic. Now, reflecting on our poor performances, Solskjaer is accountable for some things. Obviously, Solskjaer's tactics and his team selections have been questioned a lot. But there's also players that have to take responsibility for those poor performances. Revert back to what I've mentioned so many times on my recent videos. You know, at this moment in time, the club from top to bottom is in a predicament. Um, obviously, to get out of this predicament, we need a change of manager and structural changes are also needed at the club. And of course, there's still some deadwood at the club as well. Solskjaer knew when he'd taken over at Manchester United, it was going to be a massive job. Not only a massive job, a difficult job as well, despite him knowing the club through thick and thin. Ole is managing one of the biggest clubs in the world. Solskjaer got appointed in in December 2018 to replace Mourinho. He's been permanent Man United manager since March 2019. And... I expected Solskjaer to do far worse than he has done, so in that aspect, I am shocked. You know, there is positives regarding Ole. You know, I think he has developed the youth well since he's come in. He has made good signings as Manchester United manager. So far, he's signed 14 players. In the summer of 2019, he recommended Daniel James and wan and Harry Maguire in. In January 2020, he brought Bruno Fernandes in and Odina Gallo in on loan. In the summer of 2020, he brought Edison Cavani in, Donny van der Beek, Alex Tellez and Maddi Arlo and Facundo Palistri. And in this year's summer transfer window, he brought Heaton in, Sancho, Varane and re-signed Ronaldo after 12 years. Manchester United have spent over £400 million under the Solskjaer era. And Solskjaer's enjoyed like five transfer windows now as permanent Man United manager. Uh, some progress has also been made under Solskjaer as well. Because uh, Solskjaer's got us to semi-finals. He got us to three semi-finals in his first full season. You know, last season, Solskjaer got us to the EFL Cup semi-final. Last season, he got us to the quarter-finals of the FA Cup. And last season, he got us to the Europa League final. And that was his first major final as Man United manager, but unfortunately we didn't win it. So there you go, and last season he got us a second place finish, and in his first full season he got us a third place finish. Ollie's also got rid of a lot of players since he's come in, which he knew he had to do. Um, he loaned quite a lot of players out in this year's summer transfer window. He loaned to Heath Chon out for Kondo Palistri, Brandon Williams, Ethan Laird, Andres Pereira, and Axel Tuanzebe. Ollie's also got rid of a lot of players permanently as well. Uh, we only sold Daniel James in this year's summer transfer window, so that was disappointing from a Man United perspective. A um, lot of other players he's got rid of permanently, though. He released Sergio Romero and Joe Pereira. He also... Offloaded Barthwick Jackson and James Wilson. In January, offloaded Agalo, Fossa Mensa and Rojo. He's offloaded players like Yun, Valencia, Smalling, Damian, Fellaini. Fellaini left back in January 2019. Also offloaded Angel Gomez, Herrera, Sanchez and Lukaku. So there you go. 
Uh, don't forget as well, Manchester United went 29 games unbeaten away from home in the Premier League. It was Leicester that ended our unbeaten away run in the league. But Man United have been far superior away from home in the Premier League than they have been at home. Uh, Manchester United are going to offload players next year. Um, I think Paul Popper's going next year because it said not so long ago that Man United are prepared to sell Paul Popper in the January transfer window. Well, it's better to offload him in January and cash in for him rather than let him go on a free next summer. Paul Popper may never play for Manchester United again. Popper's going to be missing the rest of 2021 because last Monday... Popper suffered a thigh injury in France training. There again, reports from France said not so long ago that Popper wants to renew his contract with Man United, but reportedly on one condition, that he's made the Premier League's highest paid player. So Popper wants to overtake... Ronaldo as the highest paid player. At the moment, Pogba receives around 290 grand a week on his current contracts, and Pogba's current contract at Man United expires next summer because before the start of this season, Pogba rejected a new Man United contract offer. Pogba's only got one game now to serve in the league out of the three match ban he got because. If you do remember rightly, Pogba got sent off for the two-footed challenge on Keita in the 5-0 defeat to Liverpool. Uh, Pogba did play in the 2-2 draw against Atalanta and he produced a poor performance. And reflecting on his poor performance, he got heavily criticised. Pogba, though, did enjoy a good start to the Premier League season so far. He's got seven assists in the league. He produced good performances for Man United in the last couple of months of last season as well. Uh, Pogba had a long running chance for Saga. Um, Real Madrid have been relentlessly linked with him. His former club Juventus have been in for him. PSG have been in for him. Barcelona have been in for him before. And Inter Milan uh, went in for him before. Mino Riola, who's Pogba's agent, though, he's been working hard. Uh, to get his client to move away from Manchester United. This season is Pogba's sixth season at the club since he re-signed. He's won three trophies at the club so far and he's our most expensive sign at the moment because we paid £89 million for him. You know, I think Matic is also going next year. Matic isn't one of our first choice midfielders, but despite that, he still seems to get his chances. Surprisingly enough, he's ahead of Van der Beek in our midfield. I think Matic is the only predominant centre defensive midfielder we've got. I've always had my reservations about Matic, even though he's had some good games at Man United. Matic has been at Man United for four and a half years. We got him for £40 million from Chelsea back in 2017. Uh, Lingard, I think he's also leaving next year as well. Lingard doesn't really get in the team. He's made a few appearances this season. Lingard, I'm hearing, could be going for just £10 million. Well, earlier on this season, Lingard rejected a new Man United contract offer because of two players. Lingard's current contract at Man United expires next summer. Lingard's been part of the club for a long time and... At one point, uh, Solskjaer said he wants Lingard to stay. Second half of last season, he enjoyed a four-month loan spell with West Ham and what an impact he made. 
Donny van der Beek, I think he's also going next year. Well, he is going next year because he's confirmed it himself. You know, van der Beek's not getting enough game time at Manchester United. So, reflecting on that, I haven't had much of a perception on him. But overall, he is a good player. Martial, I think he's another one that's going next year. I think Cavani's going next year. I think Matt is going next year. Um, I think Telez is going next year as well. I think Jones and Bay are going next year. I think the lot's going next year. And I think Dean Henderson will go out on loan. Because Dean Henderson doesn't get his opportunities now. Because as you all know, De Gea reclaimed that number one spot back. So anyway guys, that's everything to update you today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always. My channel name's Red Devil 24 And take care. God bless. See you all again very soon.